Good morning. First of all, we hope you are very well, healthy and safe in the proximity of your loved ones. We thank you in advance for joining us in this webinar, Critical Steps to Securing and Managing Your Remote Workforce. At GM SecTech, we recognize how critical it is to keep our operations functional in such a complex time as this. By understanding the challenges of information security and adding to the daily challenges of this contingency, GM SecTech and its partners will be offering weekly webinars over the next few weeks to help our partners successfully navigate this time through conversations aimed at protecting their sensitive information, their customers' information, and maintaining a secure remote connection. Today's conversation is developed jointly between GM SecTech and Absolute. We would like to take a moment to tell you more about our organizers of this webinar. GM Security Technologies is a company with 50 years in the computer security industry. We create innovative solutions that help accelerate business progress in the areas of services, business continuity, integrated security, physical and technological, cybersecurity, as well as process automation and orchestration. Their principles of simplicity, innovation, and customer success have made them the leading and fastest growing security and technology provider in Northern Latin America. Absolute is the world's leading self-healing security solution serving as the industry's benchmark for endpoint resilience, visibility, and control. As your organization makes a shift to mandated remote work during the current COVID-19 crisis, it becomes critical to maintain business continuity in order to uphold company security and employee productivity and safety. IT and security teams have been called to, to keep their organizations running smoothly and remotely. Join us to learn which actions you can take right now to protect your organization remotely. Gain visibility into all devices, even ones that miss, are missing or stolen. Use Absolute to recover them and prove that your data stayed secure. Report on the health of security applications such as encryption, anti-malware, or SCCM, and automatically repair them as soon as they fail. And support remote work and ensure VPN eff efficacy across your fleet. Some general rules of engagement for this presentation. There will be a 45-minute presentation, and at the end, we will have a 10-minute question and answer session through chat messages. If you have any questions at any point during the presentation, we invite you to write them down in the chat so that we can answer them at the end. We, all the lines will be muted during the presentation, and we, without further ado, we have here from Absolute, Steve Deck, Senior Director of Channel Development, and Ryan Sparks, Absolute System Engineer. Steve? Thank you, Orencio. Uh, pleasure to be here today. And uh, boy, what a crazy time we're in. I can't think of any of us uh, back, uh, you know, New Year's Eve thought that we would be in the situation we're in now. You know, the pandemic has really created a situation that's unprecedented in our careers and lives. And uh, those of us in IT, uh, you never could have managed something of this scale something where now entire organizations are working remotely. Um, entire organizations are accessing, accessing sensitive data and resources from non-secure or low bandwidth home Wi-Fi networks. And IT is now being called upon to support and secure this remote workforce that could be either on the corporate network or off the corporate network. Um, so I'm gonna spend a few minutes uh, talking about uh, some best practices that we've seen uh, that have been successful from a corporate perspective, some of the things that Absolute does uniquely, and then hand it over to Ryan to really walk in the solution and give you kind of a, uh, um, a bird's eye view of uh, what the solution could offer to uh, your organizations. But first, uh, um, I want to talk a little bit about crisis management and governance. Um, it's some best practices that we've seen work successfully, uh, something that's worth repeating. Um, it probably um, is something that you all are doing now, but it's definitely worth repeating. Uh, so what we have done at Absolute uh, uh, from an organizational perspective to make sure that uh, 
um, we're ready to deal with this uh, pandemic and that our operations are running smoothly and our employees are safe and secure um, is really this three-step process. You know, the first is to ensure that senior leadership meets to understand their concerns, um, the concerns from not only um, are we able to keep the lights on, our customers um, continuing to be satisfied, um, or our employees continuing to be satisfied, but you know, really have senior leadership meet uh, to define what you know the key objectives and concerns are for the organization. And then the second piece is to then assemble a risk committee um, comprised of really a cross-functional staff, uh, people not only from the C staff, um, but from engineering, from sales, from marketing, you know, all aspects of the organization to really get together, take a look at the, the C staff concern and to identify and line the organization uh, to either implement um, or create uh, new business measures. And the last piece, uh, which is extremely important, is to ensure that we are communicating with our staff regularly, um, communicating not, in ter not only in terms of uh, what policies and procedures are in place that they need to adhere to and take advantage of, uh, but also to ensure and to check in on the employee and staff to make sure that they feel uh, safe and secure and to ensure that uh, you know, their issues and needs are being addressed, both from a, from a business process perspective, but also from a uh, uh, personal perspective. So one thing that Absolute has done is um, when this uh, crisis hit, uh, we actually polled our customer base uh, to really try to understand what their greatest areas of concern are um, as they're uh, being um, employed or asked to support their work workforce. And uh, these are the three things that kept coming up uh, time and time again. Um, the first is employee safety. Um, and privacy is really an aspect of that. Um, and the question is really, are they able to safely perform their jobs? And are employees uh, being protected from malware attacks or intrusions by viruses and such? Uh, the next piece is data and device security. Um, and uh, a particular aspect around that is in terms of maintaining compliance. You know, now with devices off the network, employees working from home, and particularly in regulated industries, um, IT is being called upon to main comp maintain compliance across all these devices, whether they're on the corporate network or off the corporate network, and now whether they're dialing in from a home network. Um, and uh, sensitive data these days might be downloaded to devices uh, versus previously that wasn't the practice. Uh, the last piece is employee, employee productivity. Um, business goes on. We want to make sure that employees are productive, that they have the tools and resources they need to be productive, as well as, uh, as I mentioned before, make sure that the tools that uh, you you purchased and implement are actually functioning and operational, uh, to, you know, such the such as the antivirus or the anti malware tools, uh, to ensure that the employees are able to work in a safe and productive environment. So we're going to go through in a little minute, in a little bit, about uh, how Absolute addresses some of these areas. But first, I wanted to spend a second to talk about what's unique about Absolute. Um, some of you might have heard of Absolute, and some of you might not have heard about Absolute. Uh, but um, we uh, commissioned an endpoint security trends report last year, and uh, we have the 2020 version coming out uh, in the next week or two. And it really takes a look at uh, what are some of the key uh, issues facing organizations and they look to uh, secure their company and more importantly secure the endpoints and a couple things uh, jump out from this report and namely uh, most breaches originate at the endpoint um, a lot of research shows that about 70 percent of security breaches start at the endpoint and organizations like yourselves are spending a lot of money uh, to secure and protect those endpoints, you know, investing in uh, endpoint management tools, encryption tools, antivirus, anti-malware, um, a whole slew of tools. Uh, we've uh, we've assessed that most organizations have anywhere from five to seven endpoint tools running on those endpoints to protect and secure those endpoints. Um, but with all this investment, still 70% of security breaches originate at the endpoint. And what the research shows is that over time, those endpoint controls degrade. And there's a 100% guarantee that at some point in time, those endpoint protection tools will fail. And that could either be because the tool never got deployed or installed, um, the end user deactivated it, 
um, a critical patch didn't get installed so that it's not as effective in terms of preventing some sort of attack, um, or the tool got corrupted over time. And what Absolute does, and I'll show in a second, uh, we do something very uniquely in terms of being able to provide customers um, essentially an unbreakable digital tether to that endpoint device so that regardless of where that device is or what happens to that device, you as an IT professional or as a security professional has constant visibility into that endpoint and the ability to secure and protect that endpoint. And that technology um, that uh, we've developed is something we call persistence. And that's really kind of the, the secret sauce and the claim to fame to, to what we're gonna show in a second and what Ryan's gonna demonstrate, but it's really the foundational element is this application persistence. And back uh, in 2005, uh, we began establishing relationships and working with all the hardware manufacturers where today, um, about 70% of all commercially shipping endpoints contain a piece of our technology embedded in the firmware of those devices. And that piece of technology is essentially indestructible. Uh, the devices ship today, so if you're buying today, you know, HP, Dell, Lenovo devices, pick your manufacturer, our technology is already embedded in the device and it sits there dormant. And when somebody actually buys a license of our product and installs our agent, it activates that technology and basically ensures that whatever happens to the device, whether it gets wiped and the OS reinstalled or whether their agent gets corrupted or removed, um, it basically self heals that agent. And as I mentioned before, gives customers that constant digital tether um, to that endpoint device. So this persistence technology combined with our endpoint client agent uh, essentially gives customers a, uh, a single plane of glass to view all their assets and essentially resilient visibility into all their endpoints and visibility into the health of those endpoints, the health of the various security agents on those endpoints, visibility into what type of data is on the endpoint, uh, visibility into terms of where the device is, and then they can take remedial action on those devices to either uh, protect or secure those devices. And just to, uh, before I hand it over to Ryan, um, I wanted to talk a second about um, some uh, something that we recently post on our website. So if you go to this link, and I know it's a long link, but um, if you go to this website, uh, what we're doing is we're polling um, a random sample of our customers' devices and over 4 million devices. And it's actually um, proving out some of the things that I mentioned before. Um, we're collecting a ton of data points, but there's two things I wanted to illustrate that's showing the impact work from home is having on device utilization, um, despite you know our heightened sense of concern and our heightened need for governance during this time. Uh, the first is uh, device OS health. Um, what these charts are showing is um, of the sample size, um, what the device health was pre-COVID and what the device health has been over the past uh, several weeks and months. And from a Windows OS perspective, you know, despite all these issues, um, you know, after the COVID-19 uh, work from home situation uh, hit, there was a little bit better hygiene, but in essence it's staying relatively flat and still, um, you know, the average patch age is about the same, you know, 90 days post COVID versus 95 days previous. And then still 75% of Windows devices have OS versions that are greater than a year old. And a good example is, uh, you know, the Microsoft uh, recently announced two Windows 10 security vulnerabilities that are affecting OS versions below a specific OS build. Um, if your organization can't one detect which devices in their fleet, whether on or off network, um, are susceptible to that, or if they can't detect which devices have applied those patches, and of those devices that haven't, if they can't uh, successfully push that patch down to that device, then the organization is extremely vulnerable. The next piece is around device and data security. And either because employees are now accessing data via slow home networks or their VPN tools are not able or whatever reason, um, we're still seeing that the security controls on these clients' devices are still 
um, below average. Um, on average, about 72% of these fleet of devices um, have security controls that are functioning and operational, and another, you know, 75 to 80% or, or 25% uh, to 28% did not. Um, and we always like to look at it's one thing having knowing where the endpoints are and the endpoints that have these agents um, enabled and secured. It's another thing about which one not knowing which ones don't have those tools and and uh, enabled and operational. And that's really the area of vulnerability. Uh, the last piece before I hand it over to Ryan is the increase in sensitive data found. Um, like I said before, perhaps it's because people are working from home and accessing slow networks. They want to download the data onto their local device, or perhaps because they don't have that governance uh, from working within the office. Uh, we're seeing that increasingly more and more devices have a greater uh, percentage of devices have sensitive data on those endpoint devices, uh, which is an area of concern. If that device goes missing, lost, or stolen, you know, I'm still responsible for that device. I'm still responsible for ensuring compliance of that device. And if I can't uh, rectify that, um, that's that's a potential data breach and a potential reportable breach that has huge fines and uh, potential uh, liabilities associated with that. So without further ado, um, I'll hand it over to Ryan, and he's going to drill down into some of the things that we do to help um, improve employee safety, data and device security, and productivity. Ryan? Yeah, I appreciate it, Steve. And this kind of goes back to the, the main three items that Steve mentioned early on, but goes into a little more detail around the different uh, components of what makes that up, what, what, the, what was the feedback consistently coming back with from customer concerns, things that are um, that they're experiencing now more than ever because of the unique circumstances that we're all in. Um, and I can't reiterate enough the, the importance of the embedded technology that Absolute has in all of these OEM manufacturers that gives our customers a leg up from a visibility standpoint to these devices. That's critical these days to have line of sight to these devices, ensuring that I know what's going on with it from an IT administrator standpoint but should actions need to occur, devices drift from one location to another. Um, you'll see even the geolocation, geofence area, there are certain customers that are also using that to identify specific customers that go into hotspot areas, um, that certain precautions can be made if those users were to go back in the office, they can proactively reach out to those folks to say, hey, why don't you just work from home or make arrangements accordingly and easily send the messaging to the end user via the end user messaging platform within the console as well. And I'll go into more detail visually to show you how this actually works. Uh, but there, the main core area of having line of sight to these devices is imperative in the times that we're in so that not only A, do you see these devices and these sort of change config that occurs that might kind of raise the, the, uh, the device on the radar, but also to rapidly respond to it, to go ahead and remediate any sort of situation that arises so that you can stay ahead of it rather than always playing catch up. So um, one of the things that we try to, to do from early on with our customers is give them greater than 95% visibility to all their assets. 100% um, will be great, but realizing there's gonna be devices that are in transit, the loaner pool, um, legal hold machines, what have you. And we have scenarios to cover those as well, but we want you to be able to maintain the maximum uh, visibility to all your devices, regardless of where they are. And, these days, it's anybody's guess where all the devices are because many folks are, you know, scrambling to get different devices out to the end users, whether work from home or work wherever they may be, for that matter. And part of that struggle tying to the productivity component is, are the applications that I depend on from the, the IT environment on the device, are they up and running as they should be? Do I get the utilization from my end users appropriately? And are they actively being used? If you deploy a lot of resources to these devices, both hardware and software, I wanna make sure my end users can actually leverage that across the board. So ensuring that those software solutions have maximum uptime is obviously gonna be key, um, along with um, the other components that we'll go through as well. And then tying to the other items, usually when the day-to-day -day operations are, are happening or oversight with all of these devices, many customers kind of want to have the uh, the moment's notice be able to see what is the compliance around you know SCCM being a lifecycle management solution or encryption or anti-malware. When an incident occurs, typical questions that you're going to face from an IT uh, security environment is, 
is the device encrypted and was malware on, present on that device at the time of the incident. If you don't have line of sight to that device, you're kind of at a struggle to pull those data points. So we're gonna put those front and center within your dashboard, but to be able to give you line of sight or drill down information to pull those components out or extract it. And many of these data points can also be fed via API into other uh, solutions. The CMDB of your choice, whether SCCM, uh, ticketing system, you name it. Uh, but the goal is to give all of our customers visibility to the device and also the data components that make that up. The last item under the data and device security is critical these days as well because many of the, the controls that customers had in place were highly dependent on these devices being on VPN, devices being on network, locally there in different offices. Obviously, different rules apply these days. People are who knows where from the work from home situation. But in order to allow customers to overcome that gap in coverage, we added a solution called Absolute Reach. What it actually allows customers to do is to deploy PowerShell or Bash scripts, depending on the OS platform, directly to these devices to do a number of things. And actually on the next slide, it'll go through, there's greater than 120 different scripts that are built into the console. And within that, those pre-built scripts, we realize not every situation is going to be exactly the same from day to day. They're going to change as, you know, case of life. Um, one day we may be adding a script to uh, add additional firewall rule to block iCloud or Dropbox or whatever the cloud storage application is. The next day we may be blocking USB storage access. The next day remote install of applications. You name it, many of these uh, struggles that customers are facing of, well, I don't have line of sight to the device. With Absolute, you do, and you can actually do everything to that device as if you're right in front of it. It's the great power of scripting to these devices, and many customers in the past have relied on tools like SCCM, Altera, Avanti, you name it, to push these commands when the devices were connected via VPN or on network. But now we're able to overcome that, as I mentioned, to ensure that you do have line of sight to the device, and therefore you can take full control and bring that device into compliance as well. And kind of one key component tied to that is, how do we make sure that those other applications are up and running? I spend a whole lot of money on applications from a security standpoint. Well, Absolute can mirror what we do at our core with regards to third-party applications is the way Absolute looks at it. So there's a list of them here. We can do health checks or validating are these applications up and running as intended? If there are irregularities or services aren't running, applications aren't uh, installed as they should be, essentially we're doing health checks on these other applications, we can tell you where the faults are, so the expected result versus the actual result, so you know where the problem exists and how to finally tune or go after and target that uh, resolution as well as we can automate that for you. So if we do see irregularities with any of these applications, we can actually take the ball and run with it and essentially reinstall the application on the endpoint and mirroring the, the process that we do with our own internal application. So we're basically leveraging what Absolute does at our core, that core persistent agent that Steve alluded to is built into the hardware of all these devices. Now we can parlay that into fortifying security on your endpoints to make sure that all those other applications are present and accounted for and you're getting your money's worth and they're operating as intended. And what I'll do is I'll go through and, and switch to the actual console here and display that for you. But the console itself, bear with me, it switched screens on me. So you should see my screen now. The, the web browser itself is showing the web console. So we're delivering yeah, we software as a service. The solution itself is software as a service, meaning that the solution is baked into the cake, if you will, built into all the devices. All you simply have to do is activate it. So that core component, that persistent agent that's there, once you turn it on, each customer account is assigned a unique activation agent that's essentially coded with your account details. That will instruct the device where to phone home to. Once that device has that kind of light switch turned on, you'll have visibility to the device, but also the core components or the attributes that make up that device or your entire fleet. And from that, you can extract many different data points. There's upwards of near 500 different data points that you have visibility to 
of which you can also feed into other solutions, like I mentioned, the Avanti, the uh, SCCM, Altiris, you name it, so that you can share the wealth. There's also um, the ability to link into things like a ServiceNow or a ticketing system as well. So the wealth of knowledge is not just solely consumed in the console. While we'd love you to be in here 24 seven, we realize there's many hats that folks are wearing these days, especially. So sharing the wealth with the other parts of the organization is key and critical these days. But I mentioned early on, when you have line of sight to these data points, you can utilize that data in many different ways. And all of these dashboards can be moved around and modified, what have you, if you wanna see trends of how is my encryption today versus how was it in the past? Maybe you're repairing or replacing devices, so on and so forth. Or one component that we're seeing as of late, because obviously this is a different kind of uncharted waters for many IT folks, are there's a lot of critical vulnerabilities that have come out lately. I don't have line of sight to these devices. How can I ensure that all of my systems are up to date as I kind of expect when these devices are on network? But again, group policy enforcement's not there. These devices are who knows where certain updates aren't going out to devices, how can I really leverage or see from the data that Absolute gives me what may fall into that bucket of those vulnerabilities? You can use the reporting metrics or the, the attributes, if you will, to key on many different components. One of the ones that Steve actually mentioned was a critical one for a lot of customers these days because Microsoft and Windows 10 had a, a couple CVE or critical updates that were there related to certain Windows 10 builds we have the ability, you can customize what you're looking for within the console to finally tune which systems within my environment are susceptible to that vulnerability. And then from that, I have the ability to, like I mentioned earlier, run scripts directly to devices of which we've already added in a day zero release, the ability to start remediation regarding that vulnerability. You can customize these any which way as you would imagine. I mentioned earlier, the scripts is a powerful tool in that I can take action on that end user machine as if I was right in front of it. Because of the unique situation or uh, real estate that Absolute has with all of our partner OEMs, we can run this either discreetly at system or root level access to the machine, or you do have the ability to run it as a logged in user if you need to tell the end user a message possibly pop up on the screen, hey, we're repairing ABC application on your machine, we're updating your machine, so on and so forth so the end user knows that what's going on. Um, you can also do various different things such as reboot the machine if you need to, because one of the key areas that happens with a lot of these updates is yes, you can push out the updates to the endpoints, but an often overlooked component of that is how do I maintain security on these devices? Because should an incident occur, I wanna make sure that I'm up to spec at a, any moment. And what we were seeing was some customers were pushing out updates to machines, but not taking into account other security applications on that box. What I mean by that is we give you visibility to the encryption and anti-malware and so on, but one critical component of this is when you update anything related to Windows, you may have situations where you're updating Windows, but unbeknownst to you, BitLocker is getting suspended or encryption is essentially getting suspended so that those updates can actually take place. We'll give you line of sight to all those attributes so that Again, I can select the impacted machines and go ahead and reboot those machines to re-engage BitLocker. Or if people change the drive, we'll give you line of sight to that. So having these key components at a moment's notice at your fingertips, essentially, are key in not only knowing what sort of change config or issues arising within my environment, but also rapidly responding to it. And then should anything happen, and I'll go to just a regular report here to give you the wealth of knowledge within um, the actual asset report, but you have line of sight to your entire environment and you can modify any of the columns of data that you need to see. Again, there's hundreds upon hundreds of different data points and you notice it's cross-platform uh, capable. So we work on really any platform that's out there. Uh, but if you look at the many different devices, you have the ability to drill down layers deeper into the asset intelligence of what the makeup is of the device or devices within your, your group. So you can see last time it's been rebooted, the BIOS revision, even down to battery serial number, you name it, it's all visible for you. If there are particular devices that you need to key on and you want to kind of finely tune or maybe an alert came, uh, came about where a device name change where you don't recognize showed up, 
you can have alerts letting you know within the console of any sort of change config that meets specific criteria. Should those events happen, it trips the wire, it will notify you appropriately. Those can also be fed into a SIM connector as well so that you have line of sight to this first and foremost to know when these actions are happening on the device and things meet certain criteria such as encryption status changes, um, the OS product key changes, whatever the variables you're keying on, you know about it first and foremost, but then I can also take action directly on that device. A lot of customers recognize, and this is one of the components that was you know, feedback from the, the customer base, what are they leveraging today? And one, not surprising, is freezing devices. If there's a device that shows up that either looks irregular, you need to recover devices. There's a lot of devices that are out there. So this is a critical component that a lot of customers are leveraging, not only today, but when life hopefully turns to normal uh, down the road. You have the ability to freeze a device, to essentially send a message to that device, but it locks the device in its current state so that whatever the detail is that you're seeing, you can put a custom message or logo or you name it on there, but it's gonna splash this in front of the end user and they're locked out of that box. They can no longer access the machine. And the goal of that is to force behavior on the end user where they're locked out of that machine. It terminates their session essentially is the experience and it pushes them back to a login screen without them actually being able to see the login screen because they're greeted with the, the customized message you created. The only way to unfreeze that is to enter the passcode that was either specified or randomly generated at the time. And this can be done on demand or on a specific date. So a lot of contract workers, situations and things like that, it may also be used. Where there is also another avenue that you can take from a freeze where you can actually set this up that should a device not check in or not have any internet whatsoever, it will automatically freeze in a certain specific time frame. So if a device doesn't check in within 30 days, for example, it will automatically be frozen. Great from a loaner pool or storage of machines perspective, because if somebody decides to swipe the machine off the shelf for whatever reason, they're actually gonna be greeted with that freeze message as soon as that device boots up because it has not connected to Absolute. As an authorized administrator within the console, I can also remove the freeze from here as well. So one key component from that is I not only have the ability to deliver the freeze on demand, but I can also pull it back and I can pull that back or release it within relatively short order, it can be executed or removed within 15 minutes. So pretty quick, much like the, the scripting, you can have pretty near real time access or security on those devices. Um, another component that may also come into play, especially from the data security standpoint, we all realize that some of these assets have gotten cheaper over the years, but the data is ever increasing that's on them. And sometimes you don't know what data is actually on these machines. So one of the things that people have relied on for many years, and we've actually just recently updated or revamped some of this as well to give you a little bit uh, of additional options within the data delete area is the core components of data delete have been kind of the tried and true for many years to ensure that customers can wipe the data off these machines. You can customize these in any which way. So targeted approach, as you would imagine here, the all files are all files, including the OS. They're gonna be discrete methods of deletion, but you can target one or many devices. I only have one picked here, but you can do uh, many in one file swoop if you need to. But the goal here is to uh, easily target a device or a specific file folder directory registry item to wipe the data off the machine. There are different situations now than there were in the past, but all of which include securing data on the machines that no company data leaves the organization, and then having the proof to actually back that claim up that yes, there was no data company related on that machine. We give you the ability to also select a log back from the machine that the full file path of the files being deleted when they were created, modified, and last accessed. So you have a log file that should somebody challenge you, you have that audit log essentially to rely back on of yes, I can prove that the data was purge from the record, here's the proof back from the machine when the, the command was completed. We can also allow you to, to do a perpetual delete, essentially making that a, a brick effectively. If new data populates area you specified above, it'll wipe it all over again. So and then make sure that machine is secure, but more importantly, that data never is retained on that device. One component that we added recently, as soon as last week, is the ability, and I'll 
switch gears here, is the ability to do a crypto wipe. It's a new sort of angle to wiping data on devices, but it's a it's a NIST standard wipe, or NIST compliant wipe, I should say, that if I select a specific device and have the wipe command here, I have the ability to do a crypto wipe on that device. What this will actually do is within a matter of seconds, replace the encryption key on that device and then throw the key away. What that does is instantly essentially securing that data on the device that nobody can access it. And we give you a certification that this has been done on the device. So it secures the data and makes sure nobody has access to that um, data on that device. And again, it can happen in a matter of seconds. So pretty critical these days because time is of the essence when you're trying to purge the, the data on the machine. So if you don't want or don't have the time to wait for a standard data elite process, that's a great avenue to take as well. Um, when we look at any of the components here, and we have different ways to group devices, but one item that customers rely on is the ability to separate or differentiate one set of devices from another. So we refer to those as policy groups. Customers or the admins of the console have the ability to enable various different settings within their, their console. And one of those components that I related to earlier was the applications that we persist. So the ability to target the applications that they've, again, invested uh, substantial money in, and like the encryption, the VPN clients, you name it, but having the ability to do health checks or report. Are my agents on the, app, on the endpoint as expected? If they are, go ahead and tell me, kind of the red light, green light sort of approach. If they are not, maybe I want to repair locally on the endpoint, restart services, run a cached installer, simple tweaks that you can do on the endpoint to resolve many issues. Or do I want to make this fully persistent as Absolute is? And that's the component where I was mentioning earlier where we can parlay what Absolute does at our core, persisting our agent into the other application so that should the other agent become corrupt or inoperable or um, some cases these days, we're seeing hard drive swaps, so there's nothing there to actually repair. What do you do? You can point to where your installer is actually located, and Absolute can take the ball and run with it and reinstall that application on the endpoint, ensuring maximum uptime for not only our agent, but any other relevant application that must be on those endpoints. We're seeing a ton of customers' usage in relation to the VPN clients, as we got here, encryption, the different endpoint security solutions. There's many of these that we add to a customer uh, security fleet to uh, fortify the endpoint or the security of that endpoint as well. Um, but the goal here is to ensure maximum uptime for your endpoint, but also security on those endpoints because we all know if there's a, a hole in the armor, if you will, somebody's gonna try to target that vulnerability. So we want to ensure that the whole endpoint is hardened in such a way where it's impenetrable, and we're going to leverage our absolute core built-in agent to make sure those other applications are up and running as well. Some other items that customers are also leveraging now is back to the, the data component. What data is on the endpoint? We have the ability to leverage expression sets that define token matches. Within those, you can have many different avenues that you can take, whether PHI, credit card, socials, you name it. It's more of like a DLP helper or DLP-like solution, not meant to replace it because we kind of take a different approach to this. We're much lighter weight. We operate when the device is not actively, actively being used. But the goal being similar in that we want to maintain that line of sight to the device, the attributes that make up that device, but also where sensitive data may be stored locally on the device or being synced to cloud storage applications. So where this kind of comes into play in many cases these days is different rules are being enforced on these endpoints. And I mean that by group policies that you used to rely on that were tried and true when devices were on network now may not necessarily be in play because Ryan's at home. He is not on the network. Well, how do I ensure that he's following proper data retention policies and saving to the corporate OneDrive and not the personal OneDrive, for example? or people saving to iCloud or various different other cloud storage applications. We'll scan the files based on those policy settings to ensure that you have line of sight to where these are being stored. You can target data deletes to get rid of this, this 
on the endpoint, or you can have education with the end user ensuring that they know what the proper data retention policies are. Because what we're seeing is a lot of times, you know, 90 plus percent of the customers, it's just education. We need to tell them, hey, this is a personal OneDrive, follow standard practices and kind of bring everything into compliance, pretty easy to fix. Um, but with this, it's key that we don't really care what file type it is. We're gonna try to scan it and see if there's any sort of matches. There have been times in the past where customers have their users saving things as JPEGs that are not actually JPEGs, they're data files that we actually pick up on that other solutions didn't. Nice thing about that is, again, our goal is to allow customers to maintain line of sight to their devices regardless of where they may reside. And so that's the one key item that, I, again, I can't emphasize enough that we want to allow customers, both existing and new, to have that line of sight so that should something happen, should alerts uh, be triggered with the data that you have line of sight to in the console, that you can rapidly respond to that as well. And all of that data can be fed externally to other sources that I mentioned earlier, including actually the device freeze or retirement of devices. Those can be also fed into the, the details with those other CMDBs or help desk tools so that you're not only sharing the data, but also hopefully saving you a little time and effort from retiring your devices to make sure that you turn the, the absolute agent off so that persistence essentially is turned off moving forward. And as Steve alluded to earlier, on our website too, we go through all the manufacturers and if you select the actual OEM, it'll go into the specific models really since 2005 forward, we're built into all these devices. And happy to an answer any questions at the end, but from there I'll hand it over to Steve to go ahead and close us off here. Thank you, Ryan. Let me just uh, switch over. Um, so before we hand it over to questions, just want to mention um, one thing that Absolute has done to help enable our customers um, and support our customers during this time. Uh, we've enabled two of the critical features that Ryan spoke about um, across all our product versions until the end of August. And the first is application persistence. Uh, one of the critical tools that uh, you're going to need to ensure that your employees are utilizing is VPN. So as they're accessing corporate resources, make sure they're doing that through a secure tunnel. Um, so we're offering our application persistence capability uh, for VPN apps um, for free across all our product versions. Uh, the other piece is the absolute reach tool. That's the tool that allows you to push um, either uh, a script from a library that we've created or any script, script that you've created out to any device, uh, guarantee its execution and get results back. Um, that product or that feature is available for free as well. So wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of that. Um, if you are utilizing Absolute, um, if you buy our lower end version of our product, you also have this functionality available to you. So with that, uh, we'll turn it over to uh, uh, any questions that you might have. Thank you, Steve and Ryan. I appreciate the presentation. Very insightful and very uh, useful in an enterprise and fleet kind of management perspective. Um, I'd like to respect everybody's time. We got about um, about eight minutes, nine minutes uh, left in it. We do have a, a few questions. Um, if we don't get to every question that's being asked, um, uh, we'll, we're going to be sending out a thank you note. And uh, I'll be glad to arrange at that time any kind of further meeting with Steve and Ryan. So one of the questions, uh, Steve, that, that's come up in the chat room is, uh, we already use encryption. Why should I be concerned about our data being at risk? Yeah, I, I can take that. Um, and it, uh, it, it comes down to the question about, uh, you might have deployed encryption on the tool. Um, but how do you know whether that tool is actually functioning and operational on that endpoint device? And even if that tool is, uh, let's say that tool is not on that endpoint device, how can you ensure that it is always functioning and operational? Um, so like I said before, these tools are only as good as them um, working and operating and doing what they're supposed to be doing on their endpoint. Um, so I like to consider Absolute as the foundational layer to your uh, your security strategy. You know, security is a multi-layered uh, um, 
sport that we all play in. Um, so um, it's important to use absolute as that foundational layer to ensure that it's functioning. And if it's not, to ensure that it, uh, it remains functioning. No, that's a good distinction. That's, that's a, good, a good difference. Um, another question that we have is, can you make any other application indestructible, uh, not just absolute? Certainly. Um, so uh, Absolute uh, has kind of taken a look at some of the, the, the key applications that our customers and the market has found as uh, being critical to them, you know, on around the lines of security, endpoint security, endpoint management. Um, I don't know the exact number of um, uh, endpoint agents that we persist out of the box, um, but if one of those agents are, or if one of those uh, brands are not available, uh, we can we can do that for uh, for a nominal a nominal uh, fee. Great, great, that's good because I, I know from an enterprise perspective, sometimes you have a specific software that's unique to yeah. your environment, and you want to make sure you keep it. Yeah, that's solid. a good point. Yeah, I mean. Uh, um, you know, in your organization, there might be some sort of um, uh, client-based app um, that's critical to your business. You know, whether it's um, you know, a, you know, an order entry app or some app to enable your employees to do their function, and you want to ensure that that application is on that device at all times. Um, so we have the ability to to do that for you. Exactly. So uh, there is another one here. This one's a little bit longer, so I'll try to give it uh, justice. One problem we have is that we can't push Windows updates when devices are not connected uh, to the corporate network. Can Absolute help with that? Does the device need to be on the network with Absolute? Hey, Ryan, why don't uh, let you uh, jump in and take that one? For sure, and that's one kind of constant struggle customers have had uh, in the past, but with Absolute, it doesn't matter where the device resides, what network it's on, whether right next to you halfway around the world at their home office for that matter. You can push out any sort of patches as you would through regular kind of policy enforcement um, directly through the reach or the scripting feature that I re referenced earlier. Uh, but the nice thing about it is you can also customize that. So it's not just simply patching or taking the the one task and completing it. You can encompass many different tasks into one command so that you're updating various different applications, so maybe Windows, the VPN client, you name it, and all of those are being updated, updated appropriately. And then as those are refreshed or updated with, with the endpoint, the attributes will accordingly update in the console so that you have line of sight to it. And we'll give you visibility to not just the attributes being updated, but also the command that you ran. Did it run? Did it run successfully? and give you that response within relatively short order, so about a 15 minute window um, that you'll have line of sight to that data. And yes, it actually took on the machine or um, it partially took or whatever the attributes may have been. Um, but the goal there is to be able to overcome any sort of gray area that customers have faced in the past to allow you to better remediate and more rapidly remediate those situations. Good. Um, another one has to do with you device usage. So. I, um, I see you device usage listed there. Can I know how much our employees are actually using their devices with Absolute? Yes. Yes, in fact, we actually give you an average daily usage, which is basically over the last week, uh, month's time, how often they're actually used. But within the drill down availability within the console, the other attributes you can pull up is how often, what is the daily usage? How often are my devices being logged into? who's logging into it more importantly these days so that if I deploy a machine to Joe user, is Joe actually using it or is his kid logging into it or relative or something like that where they're connecting to also comes in. So there's many different components that you have line of sight to not just simply the, the hardware software installed on the device, but also how many times they're logging into it, unlocking the machine, um, what Wi-Fi it's connecting to and so on. It's a great question. And that kind of dovetails into the second question about custom columns on reports out of box, right? So can you report on that kind of stuff and then, I guess, automate the, the creation of those reports so that it gets in front of the correct person? We can set up customized reports on various different attributes. There's hundreds of different data points that you can key off of, of which you can customize the columns, the order of the columns, and so on. 
those can all be exported in CSV or Excel format as needed. And those customized reports can also be saved in the unique uh, login user's account so that when they go to the report section within the console, they're front and center, basically a one-click sort of uh, response for them. Um, one key area that many customers also rely on because the last year's worth of data is readily available in the console, but oftentimes customers will leverage the data that's available externally via API to feed that into other systems so that not only from the, the retention requirements that certain uh, verticals or organizations have, like a five or seven year retention policy, you can follow in accordance with those, but also to have those automated sort of reports of where, what are the data points today versus what were they 30 days ago, a year ago, various different use cases, but um, we do have the ability to customize that and also from the external approach, customize what data is being fed via API. We also uh, have the ability to create a, a custom data field. So if there's a piece of data that, uh, that we're not collecting or a piece of data that you want to live with that device, you know, so let's say you're leasing devices there's during this time or you have temporary contract employees, uh, you might want to store on that device, you know, one, what the lease contract number is or when the lease expiration date is or when that contract employee um, employment term is expiring. And, uh, you know, that piece of data lives persistence, persistently with that device. And then you can run reports against that to kind of see, okay, you know, what employees, what contract employees um, um, are leaving the company this week or next week, that kind of thing. That's great that you can link it to policy. Um, if you do have those kind of policies in place and then be able to kind of map it straight into the device for archival and, and um, retention. Um, one last question here. Um, do we need more resources on the device endpoint to run absolute for these functions to work? Is it, is there a load? on the device itself that needs to be accounted for? No, and great question. So being embedded at the hardware level, uh, level of the device is kind of a unique area, um, but we kind of take the, the approach to be probably the least resource impacting solution on your, your endpoints. Um, Steve alluded to kind of the, the reporting that we did back last year, we're doing another one this year, but customers had on average of 10 different endpoint applications running at any given point. The approach that Absolute takes is we by far want to be the lowest resource required on that. Uh, many of the data points that we're giving you visibility to are extremely small by today's standards. And by small, I mean literally a couple hundred K at max when we transmit the data. So small from that, but huge from the power, the intelligence you get from these devices so that should something happen to the device, you want to know about it, but we still take the mindset of keep that data going back and forth from the endpoint to the console as small and limited, not limited uh, in capacity, but uh, limited in size, physical size itself, uh, but then also be able to share the wealth of any sort of delta point change between one call and the next. And we kind of keep that same fluid thought process throughout any sort of feature enhancement that we have. Like I mentioned, the endpoint data discovery earlier, even something like that, it's only running when the device is not actively being used. So it won't impact user performance on the, the end user side of the house as well. So on the, uh, the, the ease of use side, just one other thing to mention, um, it, it's not a rip and replace solution. Um, so once the agent is deployed and customers typically either deploy it via their standard endpoint management tool or it gets included as part of the standard image of the device, um, once that's deployed, it's pretty much set and forget because uh, the persistence technology will ensure that uh, that agent resident on the device is always functioning and always up to date. Uh, and it's a cloud-based solution, so the, the communication um, and that single pane of glass is is a cloud-based solution, so there's no administration or maintenance required there. So it's a, you know, from an IT perspective, it's basically you know install, set and forget, and utilize the solution to uh, secure or manage your endpoint devices. Well, great. Then um, thank you very much. That was uh, we the last question. If your if your question didn't get answered, by all means, I'll be reaching out with a thank you note, and we'll set up an answer to that question. Um, thank you all for joining us this afternoon or this morning 
for for our absolute webinar and I'd be glad to coordinate a meeting with Steve uh, for any further questions. Take care and have a lovely day and be safe.